In the previous section of the course, we focused on specific data by using filters. In this section of the course, we are going to reorder and summarize data in your worksheet. We're going to start out by sorting worksheet data. This first segment uses the shipping summary underscore start workbook, and I've already saved that file under the new name of shipping summary. To start out, we click cell C3, and then on the Home tab, in the Editing group, click the Sort and Filter button, and then click Sort A to Z. Excel sorts the data by season, with the seasons listed in alphabetical order. Now in the Sort and Filter list, click Custom Sort. The sort dialog box opens and it displays the parameter of the sort that we just applied. If it's not already selected, select the My Data Has Headers checkbox. Now in the column list, click Customer and then in the Sort On list, if necessary, click Values. It's already selected so we don't have to. Finally, in the order list, make sure A to Z is selected. Now we click the Add Level button. A new Then By sorting level appears. In the new column list, click Revenue. Then in the new order list, click Largest to Smallest. And click OK to apply the sort. When we do, Excel closes the Sort dialog box and sorts the data list. Now in the Sort and Filter list, click Custom Sort, click Then By, and then click the Move Up button. Excel moves the Revenue Sorting rule above the Customer Sorting rule. When we click OK, Excel closes the sort dialog box and sorts the data list. Now we select cells G4 through G7, click the File tab, and then click Options. When we do, the Excel Options dialog box opens. On the Advanced page, near the bottom, In the General group, click the Edit Custom List button. When we do, the Custom List dialog box opens. Verify that the cell range G4 through G7 appears in the Import List from Cells field, and then click Import. The new list appears in the Custom List pane. Click OK twice to close the Custom List dialog box and the Excel Options dialog box. Now click cell C3, and on the Home tab, in the Editing group, click Sort and Filter, and then click Custom Sort. The Sort dialog box opens, displaying the sorting operation we defined earlier. Now click the rule in the Sort By row, and click Delete Level. When we do, the sorting level disappears. If necessary, click the New Sort By Row, and in the Column List, click Season. In the same row, in the Order List, click Custom List. In the Custom List pane, click the sequence Spring, Summer, Fall, Winter. Click OK twice to close the Custom List dialog box and the Sort dialog box. And Excel sorts the data list, this time in the season order that you specified. With cell C3 still selected, on the Home tab, in the Editing group, click Sort and Filter and click Custom Sort. In the Sort by Row, in the Column list, Click Revenue, 
and then in the sort on list click cell color in the new list control that appears in the sort by row click on bottom to have Excel with the revenue cells that have no cell color on the bottom click OK and Excel sorts the data list with the cells that have a color at the top of the list. In this segment, we sorted worksheet data. In the next segment, we are going to organize our data into levels. In the previous section of the course, we sorted worksheet data. In this segment, we are going to organize data into levels. This exercise uses the group by quarter underscore start workbook. I've already opened the workbook and saved it under the name group by quarter. To begin, we click any cell in the data list, and then on the data tab, in the outline group, click subtotal. The subtotal dialog box opens with the default options to add a subtotal at every change in the year column, to return the sum of the values in the subtotal rows, and to add a row with the subtotal of values in the package volume column below the final selected row. We want to create our subtotals using those settings, so we can click OK. And when we do, the subtotal dialog box closes. New rows appear in the data list with subtotals for package volume during each year represented in the worksheet. The new rows are numbered 14 and 27. A row with a grand total of all rows also appears. That row is row 28. And I'll use my scroll wheel to scroll down to show you that row. A new area with outline bars and group level indicators appears to the left of column A. Now we click the row heading of row 5 and drag it to the row heading of row 7. This action selects rows 5 through 7. Now on the data tab in the outline group, click the group button. Excel makes rows 5 through 7 into a new group. An outline bar appears on a new level in the outline area and a corresponding level 4 button appears at the top of the outline area. Now in the outline area, click the hide detail button next to row 8. Rows 5 through 7 are hidden and the hide detail button you clicked changes to a show detail button. In the outline area, click the show detail button next to row 8. Doing so causes rows 5 through 7 to reappear. Now in the outline area, click the level 1 button. All rows except row 1 with the column headings and row 28 with the grand total are hidden. Now in the outline area, we click the level 2 button. The rows with the subtotal for each year appear. Now in the same outline area, we click the level 3 button. All the rows except 5 through 7 appear. And finally, in the outline area, we click the level 4 button. And rows 5 through 7 reappear. In this segment, we organize data into levels. In the next segment, we are going to look up information in a worksheet. In the previous segment, we organized data into levels. In this segment, we are going to look up information in a worksheet. For this exercise, you will need the shipment log underscore start workbook. I have already opened that workbook and saved it under the new name of shipment log. To begin, in cell C3, type the formula equal vlookup, left parentheses, b3, 
comma, shipments. Shipments is the name of the table, comma, five, comma, false. Then a right parentheses. When you press enter, the NA error code appears in cell C3. That's because cell B3, which the formula uses to look up values in the shipments table, is blank. Now in cell B3, type S I 3049224 and press tab. When you do, the value 51102 appears in cell C3. That is the destination zip code. Now in cell C3, edit the formula so that it reads B3 shipments to false and press return. The formula now finds this target value in table column 2, the customer ID column, so the value CI512191 appears in cell C3. Now in cell C3, edit the formula so that it reads equal VLOOKUP B3 shipments for and true. And press return. Changing the last argument to true enables the VLOOKUP formula to find an approximate match for the shipment ID in cell B3, whereas changing the column to 4 means the formula gets its result from the origination postal code column. The value 14020 therefore appears in cell C3. Now in cell B3, we type SI3049209 and press return. The value in cell B3 is smaller than the smallest value in the shipments table's first column, so the VLOOKUP formula displays the NA error code in cell C3. Now in cell B3, type SI3049245 and press return. The shipment ID that we typed into cell B3 is greater than the last value in the table's first column, so the VLOOKUP formula displays the last value in the target column, in this case the fourth column. Therefore, the value 44493 appears in cell C3. In this segment of the course, we looked up information in a worksheet, and that concludes Section 6, Reordering and Summarizing Data. In the next section of the course, we are going to combine data from multiple sources.